that you're getting kind of 30% quad activation during a squat. But is that someone that knows how to flex their quads? Is that from a professional bodybuilder? Is that, uh, or is that just some guy that you know is just learning how to squat and he kind of leans forward a lot in the squat? I mean, your your form, your technique. I mean, there's so many factors that that really uh, that really play but into is that it. Also, is that thirty percent of, of that six hundred pound squat? Maybe that's enough to, to to grow the legs the way you need to, right? Because you can't even get close to that thirty percent of six hundred pound squat when you're doing you know a sissy squat per se. <laughs> As we've just established, the quadriceps function during the squat is to extend the lower leg, the tibia. In order to decide how much load is being delivered to the quadriceps, we're going to need to do a little bit of math for me to explain. So let's say, hypothetically, this is a 200 pound man who is squatting with a 225 pound loaded barbell on his back. Now to keep the math very simple, although he is squatting, 225 pounds of weight on his back, you must also add to that his body weight above his quadriceps. This will be roughly three quarters of his weight. Now that will be all the weight above his legs, 150 pounds, added to the 225 pound loaded barbell, equaling 375 pounds. Now as you can see, since the tibia length has a magnification factor of roughly 20 times due to its length, that would mean that the 375 pounds would be multiplied by 20, totaling 7,500 pounds of load. That number, however, then needs to be multiplied by the efficiency factor 33% of his lower leg of the tibia. This efficiency factor is because his lower leg does not pass a 30 degree angle, limiting its range of motion severely. Now that will be equaling 2,475 pounds total being loaded onto his quadriceps. To take this a single step further, you'll be dividing it by his two legs, equaling 1,238 pounds total delivered to each quadricep while performing this squat. Now, this may seem like a large amount of load, however, it's not nearly as much as it could be, and it is terribly inefficient. Now, interestingly, the quadricep is not even the most loaded muscle during the squat. The most loaded muscle while performing a squat is actually the erector spinile. Now, this is because the torso is a far longer lever than his tibia, and as such, is magnifying the resistance much more than the lever that loads the quads. In short, this means that the most loaded muscle on the body is the erector spinile, or the back, even though the squat is not meant as a back exercise. It should also be noted that all exercises should be performed with full range of motion for maximum results, as well as isolating the muscle again for maximum results. Any compound exercise will be limiting your gains. It is at this point you should be asking yourself, isn't there a better way to load the quadriceps? The answer is yes. So in the same hypothetical situation, we'll take the 200 pound man and have him perform a leg extension using 150 pounds of resistance or 75 pounds per ankle. In this case, you'd be loading each of the quadriceps with 1,500 pounds of force. This is due to properly using lever magnification, as well as full range of motion inside of the correct resistance curve, what biomechanics is all about. Planes fly, cars drive, mm. computers com compute. Um, if, if, you, if you base medicine on, on science, you cure people. If you base the design of planes on science, they fly. Um, if you base the design of rockets on science, they reach the moon. It works, bitches. 